have none other than our very own Dr. Braverman. Hello, Dr. Braverman. Welcome to the program. Hey, great Willie Mays. Saunders, how are you? I am blessed. I am blessed. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, we have uh, quite a few people on with us right now, and uh, you can start, and then we're going to jump right in with some questions. Okay. Well, whatever you want to know in healthcare, let's get you in shape. Let's get you a John 1010 Abundant Life. Fire away. Yes. In- introduce yourself, who you are, and how we can get in touch with you also, you know. Okay. I'm Eric Braverman, MD. I've been writing books for since I was born. I think I came out with a pen. And total health on the brain controls the body as God controls the earth. You're only as young as your oldest part. And you can change your life with nutrition, diet, conventional medicine, conventional surgery, alternative approaches. And you can have a whole new existence of health and well-being. I've written over 100 research papers on every aspect of addictive behavior. And I'm ready to change lives right now. And you can reach me at pathmedical at Gmail, P-A-T-H, like the path train medical at Gmail. Get on the path and change your life. And if it's an emergency or critical, you can get me right away at 347-266-9361. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Now, listen, um, there's one thing I just want to commend you uh, on on, um, with the help you help uh, uh, of these brothers in terms of as opposed to with the prostate in, as opposed to standing up urinating or <laughs> sitting down on the toilet i'm a man who believes that time once as ben franklin says time wasted can never be restored although i believe that all things are possible um, including the time restoration but as a rule all of us multitask so We multitask when we drive, we do the brake pedal, we do the acceleration pedal, we listen to the radio, we we talk to people in the car. So the issue is how to multitask and make best use of our time. So in elevators, I stretch, put my arms up, I stretch. When I'm sitting with you talking right now, I have my legs in a leg raise. Um, I'm just all about saving time. Uh, outside my shower, I have my nasal saline uh, salt that goes into my neti pot and you clean your medical holes every day. What you, you look at your day from what you listen to, what you see, how you're breathing, how you're exercising. And I'm interested in getting you extra time so that you can live a life that's healed at last, healed at last. Thank God Almighty, healed at last. And then you can do more of what's most important on this world, in this world, which is love. We all can be reborn every day with love from above and become like a new constellation of health and well-being. So what do you want to know? Okay. um, Well, I have, um, I'm going to just throw it over to different, uh, right now I have my wife and uh, Renee, this is the Dr. Breverman. How you doing, Dr. Braverman? How are um, you? Doing? Um, what would you say about ulcerated colitis? What would you think that, I know there's no cure for it, but what would you say mm-hmm. I should use to help me with the symptoms and, and everything naturally? Well, would you believe, would you accept that, let's say there are a million people with ulcerative colitis, that none would be identical, that some would be have sleep problems, some would have underweight, some would be overweight, some would have sinus problems, some would have menopause, some would be teenagers, some would. So the issue is to think of yourself as a beautiful person made in the image of God and that you need to treat everything around it. All right. And I'm not going to say whether it's curable or not. I don't know how bad yours is, but as a rule, Ulcerative colitis gets better with change of diet. I apologize, but doctors are always on call. And the bottom line is that you need to lose weight. And that means getting rid of cheese, getting rid of white flour, 
checking your blood pressure. You have fluid retention. I'm just looking at you a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the question is, can you do aldactone as you approach menopause with estrogens and steroids? So one of the treatments, you know, for colitis is ulcerative colitis is steroids. So estrogen, mm -hmm. progesterone, and, and testosterone are all in play. So for, as a rule, estrogen keeps women, small amounts of natural estrogen keeps their hair and their skin beautiful. Progesterone helps them sleep better. Testosterone gives them a sex drive. It also mm -hmm. deals with some other, uh, maybe some more private aspects that we don't have to go into right here per se, mm -hmm. but testosterone keeps the genital area healthier as does estrogen. Then you have DHEA. DHEA is one of the oldest treatments in alternative medicine, but it's been written up for lupus, colitis, and autoimmune diseases. Scientific American last week had 80 autoimmune diseases, including ulcerative colitis, where there are antibodies and you attack yourself. To help other people understand that, the United States has a secretary of defense. He used to be called the secretary of war. The immune system does two things. It attacks your foreign invaders, such as fungus, bacteria, virus. It also attacks bad things in yourself, waste, debris, broken parts, etc. So we all know about like a cut that didn't heal or got inflamed or got a keloid. Mm -hmm. So the immune system is both internal defense and warfare. All right. And when you get ulcerative colitis, you might say you're literally eating yourself out of your stomach or your colon, in this case, of your intestines. Uh, actually, colon, not intestines. Crohn's is more the intestinal one. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? You're going to take natural steroids and they're going to help you. Then you got you got to study your bowel movements. We have to look at fiber, metamucil, lecithin, different things. Uh, find out whether or not you can tolerate soluble or insoluble fiber. Find out whether or not there's a probiotic that will help you out. But, you know, drip by drip, water dripping on a stone will break it. Yeah. Drip by drip, water or my healing on top of any disease will heal it. So you, you could do it. You know, you just, I don't know enough about you. This isn't, you know, really a full medical visit right now. I just, uh, hello, how are you? What are the general principles? So a good food diary would be beautiful from you. I mean, if we want to tackle this a little bit on the side, a food diary, a medication list, a blood pressure pulse, your last cardiogram, your last echocardiogram, even because if you want to do some weight loss around the chronic you know, what's the, the, the uh, colonoscopy results, rather, the colon? Uh, did anyone ever test your immune system? What other diseases you might have? There's a medical history on my website, www.pathmed, but you might say that pathmed.com and itises go together. So a person like myself, who let's say, did some sports and has a little bit of ache, you know, it could be one day my pitching shoulder, one day my tennis shoulder, one day my basketball, my lefty shoulder, my elbow could be this, that, but it's always one itis or another. So anti-inflammatory diets help you. You okay. know what an anti-inflammatory diet is? It's fish until you have gills. Have you ever eaten enough fish to develop gills? Gills would be you could no. swim underwater like a dolphin, you know, and breathe. All right. And the mm -hmm. bottom line is you fish is your cornerstone food. Vegetables are cornerstone food. Inflammatory foods are basically restaurant canned foods. Mm. Right. Not so good. Oh, okay. Yeah. They got and what about um, blood pressure medicine? If you st if a doctor puts you on blood pressure medicine, you stop taking it. Um, is that is there like a risk? Obviously, I mean, <laughs> look, <laughs> but you know, stroke is an is. A, I like your attitude. You got a great smile and a beautiful happiness to you. But yeah. blood pressure medication is a huge risk for you. You know, it, it enlarges aorta, it enlarges your heart, it enlarges chambers, it gives irregular, you know, heartbeat. So. Stopping Heart Disease Naturally, that's one of my books on Amazon, Reversing Heart Disease Naturally. And you don't want to give yourself extra trouble. I don't know what blood pressure medicine you're on. If you want to tell me, maybe there's substitutes, but certainly weight loss is your number one way to risk to reverse it, right? Yeah, right. If you lost, 
you know, I don't know if you, do you think you're overweight? Yeah, I definitely am. But I, I really don't, I don't eat. I drink soda and I don't eat because I don't want my stomach to start hurting. So what I do, mm -hmm. I, I'm a, like a soda drinker and I won't eat food. So my weight mm -hmm. is like bloated weight, like water weight. Mm -hmm. and well, I go up there's always a way around it. I mean, either there's oatmeal that you could tolerate, the brat diet, which is bananas, rice, apples, toast. There's got to be something that we can get you eating. And some of it may be reflux because you're overweight, you're pushing up on your diaphragm and you may need to add sodium bicarb and, and acids. So the problem that you have is you happen to be a human being and a human being cannot be treated like a living colon. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a living colon go through, crawl into like on the floor, right? Have you? No. No. Right, so, you know, Living colon, people don't have a, a colon that's separate. Total treatment, fluid retention, okay. something like aldactone, weight loss pills, something like tenuate, sleeping pills, yeah. estrogen, something. How old are you? I'm 51. All right. So right now, whether you know it or not, you're going through the beginnings of menopausal madness. And menopausal yes, madness always begins with autoimmune diseases. All right. Mm. Yes. You yeah. I'm going why? Because, really bad. Right. Because your hormones, your ovaries passing away. So the old joke about men is when their uh, testicles start to die, they're called crotchety. And women, <laughs> when they, you know, Susan Summers called it, you know, itchy, bitchy, witchy, and all dried out, something like that. You know, it's starting started and everything gets right but you can stop it you can do a natural estrogen patch you can do progesterone look when you started your day today uh -huh. you put on clothes you put on shirts you put on yeah. underwear you put on mm. lipstick it looks like you did mascara i mean if you're willing to do 10 things to get dressed five or 10 things will change your life and you have to do them stepwise most people don't realize they need to spend more time on taking care of the temple of their body and we have to make it fun all right. You know, it's one thing to be free. Another thing to be loved and healed. That's yes. what we need at last. Love and healing at last. That was yes. my uh, sermon I gave at, River at Riverside Church for Reverend Forbes. Oh, I receive it. I receive it. And I know a lot of other people receive it, too. All right. Well, now the question is actions. Action. All right. Action. Okay. So take a note and say, do I want to get rid of my fluid retention? Do I want to eat first? Do I want to sleep first? Do I want weight loss first? Come up with 10 problems you have. Menopausal treatment, sex drive, blood pressure, uh, colon. Put them all down. We rank them and go after them in a stepwise fashion until you feel okay. health freedom come to your life. Health freedom. Great. All right, let's do another That's one, beautiful. Willie. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Listen, we're going to um, throw it over to our uh, Brother Fitzgerald. Greetings, Dr. Braverman. How are I you? I like that, Brother Fitzgerald. We're, you know, I'm ready to start singing, yeah. We Are Family. <laughs> yes, we are. Sister Sledge, we are family. Uh, yeah, I, I, have a question I always tell you. kids when I play basketball, I'm the son of the king, Martin Luther King. Go ahead. <laughs> hey. Oh, the king of kings, king of kings. Yeah, of what course. Are the that. Of, of, what are the causes of male balding? And is there anything that you would recommend to help prevent mm -hmm. it? You know, male balding, <laughs> again, I'm not crazy about these individual uh, taking things individually, but I'll give you the ballpark. The ballpark view is that male balding relates to the enzyme DHT. So we rarely see balding under 30, right? And the 50-50 rule is this. By 50 years old, 50% of the men are balding significantly and gray significantly. That has to do with the shift of their testosterone. And so one of the ways that's been approached is Propecia, Sol Palmetto, Avidar. Problem is that approach sometimes kills sex drive. Then it has to be accompanied by DHEA and testosterone. There's balding in children due to zinc deficiency and autoimmunity. It's called alopecia areata, where areas of the scalp 
become bald. Hair, this is what you call 60-year-old plus, plus, plus hair. All right? So I've been with a family history of balding. I've been worried about hair my whole life. N-acetylcysteine thickens hair. Zinc thickens hair. Protein diets thicken hair. Egg yolks rather than egg whites give thickness. Most of the curliness and thickness of hair is due to sulfur bonding. All right. So you know about all those artificial perms give people some sulfur bonds, I believe. I'm not an expert on perms, but the bottom line is your hair can be thickened. Uh, there are different hormones that will make your hair grow back faster. In the dermatological clinics, the orentrite clinics, they use a diuretic called aldactone a lot to thicken hair, along with what I told you before, Propecia and Avidar. I think I could pretty much add hair to almost anybody. All right. So bottom line is that's a review of it. There are many medical illnesses, autoimmune and other, that contribute. So people have thyroid disease. They have heart disease. They've had chemotherapy. Any number of conditions can be looked up on the web and, and the person will have hair loss. But that doesn't help you any because you don't have the experience of 45 years of doing it. I mean, I, I'm actually, I don't want to age myself too much, but it's 46 years I've been in medicine. So bottom line is you're going to get hair. You know, the, the, the question is, should a person be worrying about their hair or their blood pressure? You need to learn to allocate your problems based on severity. So the biggest issue for most people is how to avoid cancer, obesity, diabetes, heart disease. That's where the focus should be. Then we focus in on cosmetic stuff, how to look young, how to feel sexy, how to have good hair, how to have more abundant life. You can have a lousy life and be healthy and you can have abundant love in your life and be sick. So without abundant life and without love from above, it's hard to be blessed. Okay. Let's go to another one, Willie. Okay. Um, question that just got is um, a lot of people have uh, that they call it normal high, but what for blood pressure, the high number, the low number, what is, when they said you have a normal high, what does that mean? And when should a person start becoming concerned about their numbers when they're okay. over the... We generally take the blood pressure as 120 over 80. Many studies show 110 over 70 is even better. The problem is, as people age, they start showing up all the time as 140 over 90. The reason why is, as hormones drop, as we take more caffeine in and other stimulants to keep going up and keep doing our work, our pressure will, will get worse. Our, our, we'll go to 140 and people need treatment based on the following criteria. So how do you decide between anxious blood pressure? You do three readings. You teach a person to, when they do the reading, to relax, you try to, you know, take away the white coat syndrome. As soon as they see a white coat, people sometimes will think doctor in an emergency room and they get nervous and their pressure goes up because they're wearing the doctor's white coat. So then sometimes the doctor just relaxes. He wears his T-shirt with a stethoscope over it. We teach him how to meditate. But here's the real story. When you do an echocardiogram, a person will show uh, the heart's four chambers. All right. It's like a cross of four chambers, left atrium, left top chamber, right atrium, top chamber, lower pumping chamber, left ventricle, right sided pumping chamber, right ventricle. And if they start enlarging that or the aorta, you have what's called an organ getting negatively affected. The other place where organ, you see the damage of high blood pressure early is the retina. So before a person has a stroke or a heart attack, they or a atrial fibrillation or an arrhythmia or an embolus or a blood clot, what happens to them is they feel, oh my God, 
my tests with my cardiologist or eye doctor are showing the signs of high blood pressure. So that's the story. All right. So you need to know that if you have a disease, the proof that you really have it is not just that the test is positive, but that some system is affected. Okay. A system has to be affected meaning a vision, a heart valve, a heart chamber, another way to get hurt, you know, hypertension will affect the heart valves, uh, which are the, and to think of a heart valve, it's not complicated. It's the doors of the heart. So just like an old house, the doors don't hang flush, an old heart, the valves do not, um, the valves do not hang properly. They don't open and close properly. Okay. Is there a reverse uh, for enlarged heart? And, and, uh, you believe in a resurrection, heart? Willie? Yes. Good. So if death can be resurrected, what's how, how much easier is it for God to resurrect the heart or a valve or a piece of us that's dead? You know, obviously, you're only as young as your oldest part. When one part dies, a cascade towards death frequently happens. But I believe in the impossible, and I've seen it. So I've seen the worst types of heart disease reverse. I've seen people that are supposed to be dead in two to four years, live for decades, decades even, heart failure patients. Reversal is there. The problem is once you're dead, you could be dead a long time, but it, let's say you're dead and raised from the dead. You know what's going to happen to you anyway? You're going to die again. So the problem with heart disease is once you reverse a bad heart valve or a blood pressure or enlarged chamber or arrhythmia, people get better for two years, four years, eight years, 10 years, 20 years. But then guess what usually happens? They get sick again. So monitoring is important. So I have to learn, we've all learned to monitor our words. So our words are healing and I'm interested in people. And they're then having John 10, 10 abundant life while I preserve their life. I'm interested in them having healing, freedom, and love in their life. So good news is it can reverse, but that's not the way to live your life. The, pro the time to fix a tire is not when it falls off on a highway going 50 miles an hour. That is not the time. Very few people wait until their engine falls out of their car before they fix it in the attachments. So the bottom line is fix things earlier. And the only way you're going to fix them earlier is to know. So I created an ultrasound physical. It finds disease earlier. I created a brain health checkup for the United States that will show every drug addict, every food addict, every head injured person, what happened to their brain and how to fix it. And the brain controls the body as God controls the earth. And the earlier we try to fix things, the more likely we can remedy them, all right? And this is true in politics, all right? Everybody, Ben Franklin and the greatest, maybe possibly greatest American ever, Alexander Hamilton tried to get rid of slavery in a graded fashion. They knew it would lead to hell on earth and hell in the Civil War, all right? Sherman cried when he knew about it. And the bottom line is we couldn't stop the terrible destruction that such an ugly, disgraceful institution brought upon America. We tried, people tried to make other types of negotiations. The first thing the American founding fathers did was John Dickinson whipped off a letter with others signing it, trying to make peace with England and said, you know, we'll pay our taxes, but we want some relief. And he basically told them no. So we try to avoid serious warfare and we try to avoid serious disease. Disease is warfare. So if you didn't learn from uh, Sherman, I'm gonna help you learn. Sherman said when he burned down Georgia to end slavery, he said, war is hell. So the son of Sherman will tell you right now, disease is hell. Getting old is hell. The only way to do it well is to prevent it, all right? To prevent it from advancing. All of you right now have five or 10 diseases from 30 and 40 on. The key is to catch them early before you need a hip transplanted, a knee, a new kneecap, 
a new heart valve, blood thinners, before you've had your first stroke, before a woman that's overweight gets her first cancer, weight alone is associated with 15 types of cancer. All right. So remember what I taught you today. Disease is hell. And I intend to save you from it. Okay. Praise God. Listen, uh, we, we're down at the end of the program uh, uh, with our Dr. Braverman. And um, at this point, I just need you to, uh, is, is there any other questions before I, uh, we, we're going uh, over to uh, the other section? But me and uh, Dr. Braverman is going to be doing a television show, so. <laughs> so. I hope so. But you know what, okay. Willie? It's good to be talking to you because all these years of studying Sherman and all these years of studying disease, all these years of studying and working hard at things, I never said that phrase, quoting Sherman, disease is hell and old age is hell. And just like all the years of watching King, growing up on Martin Luther King, I, I started saying healed at last, healed at last, thank God Almighty, we're healed at last. But I only recently started to say, all of us need to feel deeply loved at last, loved at last, thank God that we're loved at last, you know, for who we are. And I, I believe that serving is the key that opens up our own heart and love. So let's end with a parable of the heart. A heart pumps out blood to 96% of the body, of the blood to the body. It takes only 4% going on backflow into the, the heart's coronary arteries. So what we learn is 96% of our blood and all day long I'm giving is about being the giver. In fact, that's my daughter's favorite book. I'm a giver. So we, the heart, give, 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 and then take some for yourself. And the hope is that the love we give to others will come back to you. All right? We'll come back to us. Um, Patricia wanted to ask a question about meat, but I know it's too late. But No, we'll I can do Go ahead. What you want to know? You want to know if you can eat the, uh, the meat uh, raw right off, like to eat the cow's leg while it's still kicking, or you want to cook it and cut it? Patricia, when you were speaking with Mrs. Saunders and you mentioned to her that she needs to eat fish, 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 basically mm -hmm. a set of gills, you didn't speak about meat. Mm -hmm. So is meat one of those products that causes inflammation in the body? It can. The biggest problem is whenever we go out, they bury our meat in salt and in condiments, you know, with like the salty, the sugary, salty, white sugar, white salt on the ketchup, in the mustards, in the pickles and everything else. So the problem is not just the meat, but the way it's prepared. So okay. if you take a lamb chop and you've cut and trimmed the fat, and you take a $2 package of tarragon and cook with olive oil tarragon and you cook peeled squash in with it and Lumberg rice, you're going to do fine with a lamb chop that's almost no fat on it and no added salt and it's filled with flavoring and spices. So if you take the leaves of the tree of life from the book of revelation are made for the healing of the peoples of the world and you add tarragon mm -hmm. but if you have become a salt addict like most americans or a sugar addict like most americans mm -hmm. then you're going to bloat for meat and you're also going to have the meat sitting there for days instead of regular bowel movements and now you have an inflammatory process there's no question that over time as a rule, meat-eating societies, meat-eating soldiers, meat-eating people get better amino acids for their thinking processes. And the more protein we have, the taller we grow and the bigger we grow and everything else. But unfortunately, most of us after 50 years old are trying to lose weight. Most of us are battling blood pressure. Most of us are battling bloat. Most of us are battling 
our desire to eat like we did when we were younger, you know, basically like beasts, you know, when I used to have a gallon of orange juice, you know, four or five burgers, three or four packages of French fries, a pound of bacon, and that's, you know, maybe breakfast. And then for lunch, maybe a, you know, 26 ounce porterhouse steak, uh, two of them with, you get the gist. So that's the way people sort of eat when they, they actually do. Like, I remember the studies on Mark Spitz, they said he had 20,000 calories a day. Right now, my metabolic scale called Omron says that I can only have 2000 calories, 1700 calories a day. By the way, that's what you all need. All of you must get this scale Omron. It'll it'll measure your BMI, your visceral fat, your percent fat, your body fat, your muscle mass. So all of you that I've seen so far today, including Willie, need more muscle, less fat. And it's if you measure it, you got something to compete against. Who we who are we competing against in the end of the day? The only person we ever compete okay. against is us. And so you know we're going to battle. We can try to outsmart others, and they can try to outsmart us. But at the end of the day, they're going to have to look their maker in the eye about who they are. And we can get a great scale now. Use technology not to make your life more complicated, but to free us. Everyone needs an O M R O N scale for fifty dollars that gives you how much muscle you have, how much fat you have, and some tips of the scale. Everything is tips. And unfortunately, if your hair's wet and your hands are wet, guess what happens? It's inaccurate. If you get a little bit of, let's say, moisturizer you put on your face and you hold it to handlebar, it actually, the electrical signal can't go through even a little bit of moisturizer without, if your feet, you put Let's say you have an antifungal cream like athletes do. They put cream every day to an actin or whatever. Can't be active. You have to have clean feet, clean hands, be naked first thing in the morning, get on the scale. And that's the discipline needed. Discipline is central to success. Inspiration, says Edison, is 1%. The rest is perspiration. We need to work hard at the temple of our body. In fact, Willie, here's our new criteria. The criteria of whether or not faith has been put into action is how much of our life effort is into taking care of the temple of our body. Okay. Wow. All right. That's Bless a great you. challenge. <laughs> You're Thank fun. You. You've got a good smile. You're in, you got an infectious smile. That's what, that's what we have to hope for. The virus of smiling, smiling virus. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're both <laughs> making me smile. Doctor, okay. Um, what I want to do is uh, just thank you uh, uh, for your information. And this is, I'm throwing this question in now just quickly. Go, using the bathroom, pooping, mm. is it how many times should you poop per day? Or is it if you, um, with, Okay. Um, it depends on the situation, Willie, but well, look. Well, well, with me, um, every morning at 5.30, no matter what happens, 5.30, <laughs> my wife knows she can find me in the bathroom. And now what she wants to know is that's good or is that healthy? Why well, I spoke, to the, I spoke to the great <laughs> clock maker, and he said that he installed a special clock in Uranus. So that triggers that at 5.30 in the morning, which mm-hmm. is my sense of humor. Willie, come on. It depends on the person. Bowel movements are very much related to your disease, your weight, your amount of fiber. There are healthy people that uh, go once a day, four times a day, twice a day. As a rule, when a person's constipated more than a day, you're going to get a case of the slows. All right. The bottom line is you really do need to move your bowels. I mean, you can't go more than a few, you know, whatever, five minutes without breathing. Uh, You got to breathe. You got to you got to think you got to sleep every day. These are certain essentials. You got to move your bowels every day. It becomes excessive when it's probably more than four bowel movements a day, even sometimes more than three, three or four. It's real constipation when you're every other day. And it's hard to regulate as people get older, their bowels slow down. And Metamucil is a classic. But look, one person takes fruit and they get spastic colon. Another person 
uh, goes on these new pills called rifampin, and they go on irritable bowel treatments, and then they could tolerate fruit. We have gastroenterologists. That's all they do is specialize in bowel health. The real issue is, do you have mucus? The biggest problem is mucus, blood, pain. Mucus, blood, pain, gas. Mucus, blood, pain, gas. Mucus, blood, pain, gas. All right? Yes. 5.30. You, I bet you most of the world wishes they were that regular. <laughs> you have an atomic clock in there? No, she bothers me every morning. She says, I know where you are. And... <laughs> but anyway. Uh, well, I think that there's more important dimensions to your marriage, but I would sit down and figure out what might she like you to be doing at 530 and uh, do it at 515. <laughs> I, know that's, I know that's right. <laughs> oh, boy. Right. Here we go. Hey, listen, I tell you, it's been a blast. Yeah. All right. Every... All right. Some of my jokes are better than others, but you know what? You're only as young. You're only as young as your oldest part. Okay. You know, memorize that. You're only as young as your oldest part. Every day, somebody gets a colonoscopy and then they break their hip. They fix it. They got their hip fixed with testosterone or bone density treatments, and then they develop unseen cancer in their brain. You have to figure out how you're going to get a total picture of your health and then allocate the important treatments, mm -hmm. right? Weight is almost always more important than any disease or any problem. Diabetes is more important. Blood pressure, heart disease, brain disease, metabolism. All right. Bless you, Willie. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. Bye-bye. Have a great day. You this too. Was, uh, uh, Dr. Braverman, every Wednesday from 4 to 4.30, he will be with us. Any questions you may have, uh, second opinion that you may want, uh, in terms of something, you know, that you may want to ask about a medicine, uh, side effects or whatever, you're definitely welcome to do so. And we want to thank him for being part of the program. What